Hey guys, this is Lauren Hollows for NOI Education Services and today we are covering, no, not another training package transition. Okay, so I think there's a whole bunch of reasons why training package transitions are a source of incredible frustration for um, for RTOs. Number one, certainly in the last two to three, two years in particular, it feels like every single training package has rolled. Um, and that's caused that, that's just caused a huge, it causes a huge amount of work for RTOs when that occurs. Um, and it's, you know, we are a time poor business in general. So that's obviously one of the big frustrations. The other one is, is that really up until recently, it was very unclear, um, across the regulators when credit transfer should be applied. Um, there has been a huge amount of inconsistency in relationship to how equivalency has been applied both at the unit and the qualification level. I think this continues to be a major source of frustration um, as you know when we look at things like the TAE training package has come across as equivalent when it's a completely different set of units um, whereas you know we have other training packages that really the units felt very, very similar. The structure of the units was very, very similar, and yet they've come across as non-equivalent and they've, you know, caused RTOs to have to go down the track of doing a, um, an addition to scope. You know, I think, um, you know, horticulture is probably a really good example of that, where when you actually look at the outcomes of the units, they, everything feels very similar. Um, and yet people are having to do additions to scope and additions to scope are taking, you know, between the three to six month mark with ASCOR at the moment. So there's just a whole range of factors that need to go into it. Now we are going to break this episode up into two parts. We're just going to look at the general transition process, and then we're going to look at the challenges of the transition process under some of the funding models. Um, so when we're dealing with, you know, transitioning students via funding mechanisms and things like that. So the first thing that I want to cover is, is like, how will I know that a training package update has occurred? So for any of the products that are on your scope, um, you should be subscribed to those products on training.gov.au. You can do that by going into training.gov.au, signing in and um, saying, you know, please notify me of updates. You can do that at the training product level and you can do it for your, for an, at an organization level as well. Um, I certainly recommend doing that for both because what that will do is, is that will send you an email if any of the training products on your scope change, um, if they get superseded, if they get updated, anything along those lines, you'll get an automatic email. And that's like kind of your first way to start tracking any of these things. Okay. What happens the day of a, a product going from superseded from like from current to superseded? The first thing that you should be doing is, is going onto your website and updating your marketing and updating your marketing materials because your marketing materials should be denoting whether or not you're delivering current or superseded products. There is nothing wrong with delivering a superseded product. So for example, you know, um, there's a whole range of reasons why you actually may have to deliver a superseded product for a period of time. Um, but it's important that students, particularly students who are enrolling, are aware of that because depending on the training model that you're delivering they may only have until a certain point to actually complete that qualification or they need to know that they are potentially going to need to roll into a new qualification and certainly if there's going to be costs if there's going to be extra time if there's going to be extra assessments you would want to be providing that information to students up front um, so a good example of this uh, that you know I've worked with from this year is we've got students who are enrolling in the Cert 3 in Individual Support, in the Cert 2 in Engineering Pathways, in the Cert 3 in Horticulture. Um, for all of these qualifications, students are made aware at enrollment. Hi, please know, you know, you are enrolling in this qualification. Um, you know, we, you know, at, at this point, we will be transitioning you over or at this point, you will need to have completed the qualification, anything along those sorts of lines. So just so that the student, again, is aware of that process kind of going into it is really important. The other thing that I would be potentially doing um, at the same time on the day of is emailing out the students and letting them know something simple, like I would quickly go in and look at whether or not the qualification is equivalent. Um, and I would just be kind of, you know, sending out an email to parents, students, employers, 
with something along the lines of, you know, hi all, please know, you know, the qualification that you are currently enrolled in um, has today been superseded by by this. The RTO is currently undergoing a process of reviewing the qualification and next steps for all students. Um, please note and understand that, you know, um, this may or may not impact your training. If it does have an impact on your training, the RTO will provide you with any uh, necessary support and information um, and we will come back to you within a month and let you know um, the formal plan for transition. Okay. Now, that's going to depend to some extent on your cohort. Um, if, for example, you know, you know that, that the cohort is going to be completing in the next three months anyway, there's no point in stressing them out. Um, however, if it's a cohort that's just enrolled and you know that the qualification is delivered over 18 months, um, then it would probably be something where I would, would be wanting to notify them because it, it is likely something that's going to impact them. And, you know, the more that we can kind of just slowly lead them into that, the better. Um, but it's, it's going to be a cohort by cohort sort of a decision. Obviously, the next thing you then need to do is you need to start looking at like reviewing the package for gaps, looking at equivalency. Um, and determining whether or not you're going to need to do an addition to scope process. If it is something where you're going to need to do an addition to scope process, then it's certainly something that you're going to want to like, you're going to want to jump on it relatively quickly. If it's a an equivalent qualification, then you know that it's automatically going to be added onto your scope. In fact, sometimes that happens from day one. Um, then, you know, it's probably slightly less urgent realistically like RTOs it's quite often a thing of like which fire do we want to deal with today um so it would probably go into a, like a lower priority box whereas if it was something where I was going to have to be doing an addition to scope I would want to be getting onto that relatively quickly and the reason for that is um is that I know that ASQA is as I said, taking that three to six months. So knowing that it might take me six months, you know, it's probably going to take me at least a couple of months to kind of get the first lot of materials written for it, to get my training packed, like to get my training and assessment strategy, um, you know, to look at my trainers and things like that, all of that sort of stuff. That's going to bump it up on my priority list. Then the other thing I actually am going to be working out is, is what is my trainer upgrade process going to look like? So just depending on um, you know, as I said, whether it's an, equ an equivalent qualification or not, we need to start putting a process in place for trainers to get upgrades. Generally, my process for this is like I pick my most industry current trainer, um, put them through the formal upgrade, make sure that they've got the qualification and then I can deal with you know, if I've got like 50 trainers, um, I might get my top two or three trainers, get them done out of house and then process the rest of them in-house with those trainers that have been externally validated um, via another RTO or via, an, uh, via another process. Um, that's certainly the way that we do it. I know everyone's a little bit different in this, but you know, if you've got full-time trainers, then really, I, look, if you've got a great full-time trainer, invest in them, love them, because God knows it is difficult to find trainers at the moment, particularly in certain areas. Um, but even just like generally, it is difficult to find trainers at the moment. So if I have a full-time trainer, I am 100% going to be investing in them, upgrading, helping them to upgrade their qualifications, paying for the upgrades for full-timers, um, and then using those full-timers to help support the upgrades of some of my other students or some of my other, um, my other trainers. Um, and then the last one, what you want to do is, is you want to be working on setting your dates for a teach out. Okay. So this is basically going to be going through cohort by cohort and making a determination as to whether or not this is a group that is likely going to be taught out. Um, if you're starting to get to, I mean, I would generally go to three months before the teach out date. Anyone who is, anyone who has an estimated completion date of three months before the transition date to after the transition and, and beyond, I would be saying to them, hey, you know, da -da 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 -da, you've got a couple of options here. You can one, you know, if, if you're a, a, a good candidate, you know, you can speed up your training. You've got to make sure that you are taught out by this date. Um, 
Alternatively, we need to transition you. This is the transition process. This is any additional costs. This is any additional um, work that needs to be completed. This is the additional time. All of that sort of thing needs to be communicated to the student. And guys, it does actually need to be the student's decision at the end of the day. It's actually not your decision. You can't force a student into a training package update. And so often I see that like there is no communication with the student. There's no approval from the student. If you are moving a student from one training package into another, you really do need to communicate that to them and you need to get their approval to go into the next one, okay? Obviously, once we get into the whole funded space, which we're gonna deal with in the next video, it's a different can of worms. Um, There's so many additional sign-off processes and things to consider, but it regardless, like if it is a fee-for-service student, you cannot just move them into the next qualification. You have to get the students permission you have to make sure it's it's another enrollment they have to be fully informed about this process that you are putting them through so please ensure that you are documenting the communication process that goes to the student you are documenting the approval that comes from the student to go into the next course and you are documenting the new enrollment that you have put them into that communication process, evidencing and documenting communication processes to the students is really important because if it does come time for audit um, and they do ask for that information, which they can ask for that information, it's in the standards that you've got to update your students, it's in the standards that you've got to have a training package transition process, um, then you've actually got all of that information there. Anyway, that's it. So, you know, sign up for TGA, make sure from day one, you're taking some small actions, make sure you're communicating with employers, parents, students, all of that. Make sure you're doing a really solid review of your training packages and do be aware of that kind of addition to scope timeline process. Um, I hope you guys found this helpful. My name is Lauren Hollows for NOI Education Services. As always, we've got videos dropping every Wednesday and Friday, ugh, Wednesday and Sunday. Um, if you guys have got any questions, please drop them below and we'll work to answer them as soon as possible. Otherwise, you can email me at lauren at anawaya.org. If you do find this content helpful and you want to keep receiving more of it, you can smash the like button, hit the subscribe button, hit the notifications button, all those good things. Thank you so much, guys. I hope you found this helpful. This is Lauren Hollows for Anawaya Education Services.